Let's learn how to use Altium Designer to design complete PCB from start to finish. This step-by-step -step tutorial series will walk you through entire process from drawing a schematic to the PCB board layout and generate a final Gerber files to get the PCB manufactured. Thanks to Altium Software for sponsoring this video. You can download Altium free trial with the link given in a video description. Also, you can simply sign up using the link altium.com forward slash yt slash binary updates and get the discount on your license purchase. Once we open up the Altium designer, then we can create a fresh new project. So go to file, new and click on project to create a fresh new Altium project. To keep it simple, I would select a local project in the Altium and then the project name, I would like to give it as a LED sequencer because we are creating a socket which will be a decimal counter socket and it's a socket which generate a water light effect as an Altium project. So click on a create button so this will create an Altium project you can see in the left pan LED sequencer dot a project PCB project is created. So we need to add two components to every Altium PCB project and one is the schematic sheet and the other one is a PCB board file. So right click on a project in a left pan and select add new to the project and select the schematic to add the schematic file to the project and you can see the file is added sheet dot schematic document. We have to save this file with some good meaningful name so right click and then click on save and now I would like to name this file as a LED sequencer dot schematic document click on save then we have to add the board file into the project so right click on a project in the left pan and select add new to the project this time select a PCB because we want to add a PCB board file so click on PCB and then you can see the PCB board file will be added automatically into the project and you can see PCB one dot PCB document so to make it more meaningful we have to rename this file again so right click and click on save and give again some meaningful name I would like to keep it very simple and similar like before LED sequencer dot PCB document and click on save now it looks more beautiful the project is LED sequencer and the schematic file and the board file PCB board file now to save the project I would right click on a project and click on save so this is how we end up creating an Altium project so double click on the schematic document and and you can see we have a schematic sheet where we can draw our decimal counter socket before we go ahead and design a socket schematic I want to show you something you can hold a control button on a keyboard and you can move the mouse cursor and zoom in and zoom out the schematic sheet this is very important when you're working with a complex uh, schematic socket now to add a component to our schematic sheet we have to go to manufacturer part search and we can search for the component that we require to be added into our project so CD 4017 is the decade counter IC that I'm looking for so hit enter and here I get this Texas Instruments chip CD4017 so I would right click on a component and select the place component option and then maybe this will be added into my schematic sheet so just place the component wherever you want right click on a mouse to deselect the component go back to manufacturer part search and look for another chip required for our project so any triple five timer IC that we will search for and this is again from the Texas instrument so we have this chip that we required so just click on place and now we have this the timer IC then right click again go back to manufacturer part search now search for LED I'm looking for three millimeter rate LED from Broadcom and uh, maybe my spelling is wrong 3 millimeter LED from Broadcom and now I think I would get this LED so this one it looks good so I can just place this part and I need to place 10 LEDs right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 right click to deselect the component if you want to move this components you can always move as and when it's needed and how you want to place it's really your personal preference so I select all this components and I just hide the comments so they will look more neat and clean select all the components if you want to move it and uh, you can just drag and place it as per your personal preferences now I go back to manufacturer part search again and I search for one kilo ohm resistor and 0805 is the footprint that I'm looking for 
and I get this register and I just right click and select the place command and uh, once it is selected I will just place all the register like one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten for every LED we need one register right so uh, I need two more uh, resistors here on the timer side timer IC side so I would just click on space button and move the component like one two I need two resistors so escape button deselect the component I select all the resistor go to properties and I hide the comments I do the same thing select both resistors on the other side and hide the comments and then I just move this component a little bit the side so uh, it will be easy for me to connect the socket so now it looks a little bit better right I can select all those components here and I can move as I said you, you can have your own personal preferences how you wanna layout your socket right I go to manufacturer part search again and I need potentiometer so I'm looking for potentiometer that's basically 3386 P part for potentiometer and I hope I would get it okay I don't get it so maybe I would just search it other way around 3386 P and I think I would get it now okay this is the one that I'm looking for 3386P1 something something it has uh, the 3D view and schematic symbol and also has a footprint if you want you can check it and I'm happy with this one so I just right click and select the place command and then I have this component here I can click on space button here and I will place the potentiometer here and then click on escape button I go to properties and then I hide uh, the comments and then in the properties I would just click on this mirror check this mirror box and it will flip this uh, symbol other way around so it will make it easy for me to connect then I go back again to manufacturer part search I'm looking for a capacitor so I'm looking for one microfarad capacitor which is uh, 0805 footprint again I think this one looks okay for me right click and select place component again and once it is added click on space and move the component I need two capacitors so just right click and then select both this uh, capacitors go to properties and hide the command so we will have enough space to work on and then we have to go back to manufacturer part search and we need to look for two pin header and the one that I want is from a company called Harwin and it's uh, M20 the part number is M20 so I would search for Harwin M20 and this is the two pin header that I'm looking for so uh, select a place command and once it gets selected you can place this component here escape select go to properties and uh, um, where it's gone it's not selected so select the component first then go to properties and hide uh, the name for the component and now I think we are good to go to connect the socket right so to connect the socket we need to select the wire command so here uh, we have the wire command so click on this place command and then or you can press ctrl w on a keyboard and then you can select the wire command and connect the component so just the way I'm connecting the resistor with an LED so something went wrong here I have to remove this and then I select the wire command again this happens sometimes when you connect your components just connect properly uh, 
So let me finish connecting. And it is. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Now I need to connect the cathode of all these LEDs to the ground pin. So just let me use the space here and then connect all the ground pin, the cathode of these LEDs to the VSS on the decade counter chip. So let me finish the connections for all the cathode of the LEDs to the ground pin. Looks good. Now we have to connect these LEDs as well. So the first LED we want to connect to the pin number three. The second LED. This connections is really your personal preference, right? How you want it to look. Sometimes um, some connections has to be better but you can always go back and optimize the schematic connections a little bit later. I don't want to waste my time to think about how beautiful it looks because I am just shooting this uh, video and uh, when you are shooting a video it's very difficult to concentrate on this smaller things. Rather I prefer to optimize the soak it a little bit later it basically makes your life easy now you just have to look for the logical connections if the logical connections are fine for you then it makes sense to just to concentrate on the logic rather than just wasting your time on thinking about how good it looks so this is how it looks at the moment so just right click deselect the command and say fit document and as I said you know you can move this components a little bit later to look better um, but I don't want to waste my time here okay so maybe you might say okay it doesn't look good but it's just fine because that's the time that I have now I connect the other components here control W and then select the wire command and connect all the components the other components and uh, you can as I said you know something if it looks very very ugly you can always go back and optimize them um, of course we need to put some uh, power pins here so right click on this icon and then you have uh, you can select place ground power port so uh, of course every electronic circuit has to have the ground port so here's a ground and I need one more ground for this timer IC and then I right click deselect right click again onto the power icon and then I select place VCC for, for the positive voltage and I put one VCC here the other VCC I need uh, place click on the space bar to rotate the VCC press escape to deselect and now you can hook up uh, the circuit again as per your personal preferences control W to select the wire command and uh, I'm just quickly just connecting the circuit as I said you know I don't really have a time to think much about how good it looks rather just want to focus on the logical connections of the circuit to work you can always uh, optimize your circuit as I said and I can move this a little bit here and move a little bit there and then control W again to connect the VCC you can just connect your ground port and that's pretty much how it is so please click escape to deselect you can connect this power port again so I connect the VCC to the VDD pin and then the ground pin to the ground pin of the timer YC okay just click escape if you want to move it you can move it this components to look better I don't know uh, so far looks cool now we have to make the connections for the other components and uh, control W 
to select the wire command and I have to connect the pin number 3 on the timer IC to connect to the clock pin onto the decade counter so just make this connections and as far as this two connection goes I just want to short these two pins and uh, if something happens ugly you can just delete the connections and then redo again control W to select the wire command and then looks cool okay okay click escape and now to connect the ground port control W I can just connect the ground to ground and it makes it very easy here and then I also want to connect this ground just escape maybe this is still fine looks cool in case if you need a little bit of space now I want to finish the connections on the side here on the timer IC control W to select the wire command and then I just have to take uh, the connections here so this goes to reset and then VCC also connects to the reset and then we need to connect the seventh pin on a timer and that goes straight in here so escape and if you wanna move you can move this you can move some components as per your personal preference to look better so this looks pretty cool now only thing left is the connection of the sixth pin control W so the sixth pin will go straight to the capacitor right so and then we have to take the trigger pin again that would connect to this pin right so that's basically how it is now look at this this is not unconnected so this basically you should avoid this kind of things which is not good so now it's done proper connection so pin number 5 will stay not connected so we will put uh, no ERC and pin number 12 also will stay uh, no ERC and just press escape because the pin number 5 and 12 will not connect to anything it's good to place go to place and select the directives and place generic no ERC so place it to pin number 5 and then pin number 12 onto the decade counter IC I think let me just see what else remains in the circuit okay so this capacitor is one microfarad this is one microfarad this resistor will be a 2.2 kilo ohm this will be a 10 kilo ohm resistor so if you can if you want you can put all the component value in it as a comment so I go to capacitor and go to properties and you can see the comment that we have hide it here I would say one uh, microfarad and then for the other one also I would put one microfarad this is only for your reference if in case you need sometimes later the potentiometer this will be I think 50 kilo ohm so just put 50k there then uh, this resistor will be it's a 2k2 or 2.2 kilo ohm whatever I mean whatever the convention you use for naming or the value go to properties the other resistor it's not selected properly I have to select then go to properties and this resistor will be a 10k resistor okay this is basically a powering circuit for multivibrator to this timer so let me move oh no I think this is better and then I think all those resistors are basically one kilo ohm resistor for the LED if you want you can put all the the value but I would not waste my time here okay the one connection look not good and that one is this one here something is wrong here right so the connections is so the output from 3 will go to 14 that's right so control W let me just make the connections here and the 7 will be connected let me connect these two resistors first and then 
press escape and now I remove again and control W and I redraw the connections because I don't want any problem later on so now this is fine okay so it looks pretty cool right click and uh, let's hope everything is good on the circuit schematic side once we're done with all the connections on the circuit schematic we have to give the proper naming to all the component on the circuit schematic so we can properly lay out all the components on the PCB and board file so it will make a logical sense to us that's called annotation annotation is basically a feature that gives a proper name to every component on a schematic now to annotate a schematic we have to go to tools and then we have to go to annotate and click on annotate schematic now when we click on annotate schematic we have to we have been presented some suggestions from the Altium that we they want to associate these names means give the name so the tool give the name by itself so click on update change list and then it says okay there are 28 components that needs to be given a name so click on okay and then click on accept changes and then it says okay these are the names that been given to every components diode resistors and all things I would rather say click on validate changes execute changes and then click on close and now you see every component has a has a has a number like this this resistor has a R4 this resistor has R7 now when you do annotate your schematic uh, and using this tool annotate schematic on the Altium sometimes you're happy with it sometimes you're not happy with it so right now I'm not happy with it because look at this this one is R1 R2 R3 and here I need R4 R5 R6 so if all the resistors are in a sequence it will make a more sense for me when I connect my socket when I lay out or maybe route my socket on the board file so you can manually change the names as you like so let's say if I want to change this R5 resistor so I would make it as a R4 and I change almost for every resistor here okay like let's say R6 I want to make it as a R5 and then this R8 will be R6 then this will be 7 this will be 8 9 and the last one will be 10 because it makes more sense let's let me show you how it make a more sense so the resistor 1 R1 is connected to LED 1 that's a D1 and resistor R10 is connected to LED 10 that's a D2 D10 right that makes more sense if the numbers doesn't make a sense then it makes it very difficult to track when you route your PCB so likewise because this R4 and R7 numbers is used uh, on the other side so I have to rename this as well so I don't want this resistor to call it as a R4 rather I make it as a R11 this resistor I would make it R12 and this resistor I would make it as a R13 right and that's it everything else I'm fine with it right so C1 C2 U2, U1, everything looks okay. Okay, at least to me. I'm happy with all the numbers and names that I have given to the circuit schematic. Now, what I'm gonna do because I made the changes after using annotation tool, so I would just right click and click on save so it will save and now I want to check whether uh, my schematic has any error especially when I connected this components and so I would just right click and save my project first and then I would right click and then I say validate PCB project so it will check if there is any error or anything that's a connection problem or something while we connected a socket so click on validate PCB project and to see uh, the messages or something we have to come to lower right corner panel and there is something called a messages section so click on messages and you can see I don't have any error message okay it's let me just make you can then read it so it says compile successful I can show you it's a compiled successful no error found so this looks cool now you might say okay this is the warning that it has it says uh, no driving source especially for C2 components it's a capacitor 2 this is the capacitor 2 it is because it is connected to resistors on the other side and the one side is connected to the ground so it's not connected to any active component that's why 
uh, it shows me this uh, warning that's basically this no driving source but it's not very potential error that's create a problem for my circuits to work so it's absolutely fine I'm happy with it there's no error compile has done successfully so I select the project tab again and here in a project tab I have my both files here and everything looks cool now the next step for us is to generate the board file so before we create a board file we have to go to project and then we have to go to project options and then we have to look for a class generation and we have to uncheck this generate rooms checkbox so this two checkbox we have to uncheck we don't need them and then click on OK so once this is done then we can right click and save the project settings now we then have to go to design and then we have to click on update PCB document so when we click on it it takes some time it gives us this pop-up box we have to click on where the changes it just say that we want to translate the schematic components onto the board file PCB board file then click on execute changes so this all components from the schematic file will be translated or transferred onto the uh, PCB board file and then we have to click on close and now hold the control button and then zoom out and you can see you have this board file if you want to see uh, the 3d view then you can click on 3 on a keyboard and then you can able to see the board file but for now I want to just click on button 2 and then I want to stay into the 2d mode and you can see here I have all these components uh, from my schematic into the board file so I select all the components here and then I will move this components on the top of the PCB okay and then I can move it for you to see and here is our board file so let me just select all these components and move a little bit here okay and then I have to do some settings on the properties for the board file so go to properties in the right side of the pan and then scroll down and we have to select uh, I usually worked with millimeter so I select millimeter and then I have to turn on the grid so we have the grid manager so double click on grid manager and here I want to give 5 millimeter grid and then I want to change the color because uh, we can't see the grid properly if the color is not visible and I personally prefer to keep it white so select the white color click on OK apply and say OK now you can see nicely the grid shows up here and we have all these components okay so before we go ahead and uh, do anything any further uh, this is the PCB board area that we have to resize based on whatever the size that we want to set for our PCB and then we will start laying out the components and then we will do routing and all other stuff now to to customize to fix the size of the PCB board uh, we have to go to view and we have to select the board planning mode now if you see in a board planning mode how it looks like then we have to go to design and then we'll say redefine board shape because we have to if in case we want to change the board shape and size and we do want to uh, customize the shape and size of our PCB board so we will select redefine the board shape and then we will just draw here like you can see on a top left corner um, it's like a 60 millimeter so I want to take the 60 millimeter select then go on the top so this will go to let's say 25 and uh, then you just have to draw a kind of rectangle of size 60 millimeter by 25 millimeter so once this is done then right click to deselect and now um, to go to 2d mode you can go and click uh, button 2 on the keyboard and now you can see this is your board PCB board now it still look very big so I want to make the grid size to be one millimeter so I can uh, make this board a little more smaller so click on G that's for grid and I select one millimeter and then I go back again view and I select board planning mode and then I go back to design again and I would say edit board shape and I don't want 25 millimeter uh, for the width rather I want to make it as a uh, 23 so 1 2 
I think this is good enough and uh, then once that is done just click on button 2 so number 2 on keyboard and now you see we have the board here now the one thing which is very important is uh, we have to set the center point here so that we can nicely measure all the uh, you know dimensions and to do that we have to go to edit and then we have to set the origin so go to origin and we have to set the origin so select the set and then you can click on this lower left corner here and once the origin is set then you can see go to view and I can click on fit document now you see the document get fitted properly right so this basically helps us to properly navigate the size and shape of the board now if I take my mouse cursor on a top right corner you can see the board shape and size properly it's a 60 millimeter uh, length and 23 millimeter wide now I can place my components on this PCB board if you want to see it on a 3d view you can see 3d view and this is a 2d view so when you place the components it's it's okay you can do that onto the 2d mode and that's basically good enough so I move this just select the components and uh, click on the spacebar to rotate the component and I will place all the components uh, it's not very important how good you place the component in the first place because first first time when you place the component you just have to roughly uh, have some idea on how you want to place it so rough layout that I want to make it and then later in the next video uh, we will going to do all this proper routing and other stuff now I just want to lay out all the components here so let me put LED 5 then LED 6 LED 7 8 and you always come back and edit uh, how you want to lay out the components it's not very important just let me fit all the components just to ensure whether the board size that I have chosen is good enough for that so I place all the all the LEDs now I will place all the resistors if if you want you can move this resistors a little bit like this so so it makes it easy to move just select properly when you select the components so let me select all three components here and place it here now I can zoom in so you can see properly and now we can place this components properly so we need to put the resistor 1 oh, we have to deselect first so this is resistor 1 first if you want you can move this as well and then resistor 2 for second LEDs then R3 for third LED then we look for R4 this is R4 then R5 and then R6 R7 here goes R8 and then probably R9 and R10 and then we have to put this uh, male header connector two pin header then we have this uh, decade counter IC that we want to place it here and I would like to place it like this for now and then we have to put this timer I see timer chip so maybe like this and then we have two capacitors according to schematic if you remember uh, we have two capacitors capacitor 1 and capacitor 2 and then we have this two resistor so we have to place this two resistors right and you can see now all the components are fitted properly here right so you can go to view now and say fit board and now you can see the board is fitted properly now sometimes to connect uh, and place this components properly this uh, names this labels or comments uh, really distracting uh, so you can select all those so I select all those LEDs 
so let me select properly sometime it's tricky if your size is too small and then go to properties and in the properties you have this designator so I just hide the designator and now you see all those LEDs have uh, the label has gone comments has gone and now you can nicely place so sometimes it's good I mean uh, even the grid side has to be smaller so press on G on a keyboard and just select 0.5 millimeters now you have more area to work on so you can nicely place all the components I will just spend some time here and uh, do it so in the future it would be a little bit easier for us to connect and do the routing so let me just place this LEDs properly once that's done then you can also move your resistors properly so they would look better and this all uh, PCB start making more sense once we are done with this and you will feel it by yourself just wait for a moment once I lay out and place them properly then when I show you the 3d view then you will realize that why I place the components the way I place them so let me just try to move the nets a little bit and sometimes you do need to uh, move this uh, parts a little bit in order to make some sense out of them and um, yeah so that's that's pretty much how it is now um, oh yeah sometimes uh, even for this uh, you know the the comments that they have like this all uh, let me try and select all those components and then I go to properties and if I can hide them for now because I don't need them so it's good I focus on components and later on we will work on them so I just hide all the all of them so this is probably we don't need so I will place it in the middle and if you select like which one so let's say text and you can go to properties and you can even change so I make it one millimeter and I would hide it for now because I don't need as I said to you we don't need even you want you can choose this one also make it one millimeter and I'm very clear I don't want this um, okay let me just move this U2 somewhere okay and still I want to hide I don't want to show so that we will focus more on the logical connections between uh, this components on a PCB and here we have the connections and uh, I think I need to move this we have to create a little bit space here and we can move this component that's basically a timer chip and you can always go back and adjust them as per your personal preferences and look at this one this you can move the comment and I also want to make this uh, to be one millimeter as a text height so the text should look smaller and you can also hide so just select and just um, just hide for now so later on when we will finish this uh, our PCB in the next video lesson I would show you how we can route this PCB uh, properly so if I show you the 3d view you can see now how it looks it's look pretty neat and clean right so fit the board yeah and if you go to the 2d view look at this now I have laid out all the components here and in the next video lesson we will going to do the routing for the PCB and even before we do a routing we do have to set some rules 
and some other settings which is very very important so the link is given in a video description for the part 2 where we will going to do the routing for this PCB and create a final printed circuit board I mean the Gerber files for manufacturing and then we will do a testing and soldering and everything into the next video lesson I hope you have found this video educational and entertaining we will going to see us into the next video lesson